What's up guys? Welcome back to my vlog. This is episode five. Hope you've enjoyed the first four so far. The Bellagio meetup game with Brad and Andrew was fantastic. Had a great time, but back where we've been having most of our success at the Aria for this one. Start in a little bit of a hole. Uh, no spoilers. We'll see if we get out of it. Out walking the dog, so figured it's a beautiful afternoon. Would shoot uh, while we're getting some sunshine and fresh air. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, share with your friends. Wouldn't you want your friends to enjoy this excellent content? I know I would. But uh, let's get right into the hands. We start this session off buying in for 300, that's the max. By the time our first interesting hand comes around, we've chipped down a bit and there's only 215 left in our stack. There's an open from early position to 15 and a call from middle position. I three bet to 45 from the cutoff with pocket tens. The early position opener folds and middle position calls. We're heads up to a flop of king, three, six, rainbow. I see bet about one third of the pot to $40. We get a call. Turn is the four of diamonds. If we're up against the king, we're in trouble. If we're up against anything else, I think the move here is just to shove all in. It's unlikely we're up against the higher overpair, jacks, queens, or aces. We would have heard from them by now. So I shove my remaining stack for $130 and middle position snap folds. Nice to just pick up a medium sized pot with a medium sized hand. In the next one, we are in the big blind. We have ace eight. There's an early position open to $15 with two callers. Not exactly a premium holding, but closing the action, it's a fine call multi-way. The flop comes six, eight, nine, all hearts. Okay, middle pair in the nut flush draw is pretty nice in this spot. Being first to act though, I check. Middle position opens to $20 and it folds to me. We're not going anywhere on this board. Under the gun is still left to act. So I do consider a raise since we have a draw to the nuts and our opponent doesn't have much left behind about $100. With middle pair plus a ton of turn cards that can help us out, I'm okay just calling and seeing what unfolds. Any heart, any ace, or any eight improves us dramatically. The turn is a seven of spades. I check again, and our opponent shoves. It's a terrible spot as it's very likely he just made the straight. Uh, it's a pot size bet for about $100. I don't like it, but we still have a draw to the nuts, so I really don't feel like folding in this situation. I make the call. Unfortunately, we brick the river and lose to a straight as expected. 9 10 of clubs. Not really a ton of analysis to give here. We took a swing and missed. Sometimes it happens. In the next one, we're trying ace eight again, but this time it's suited, so marginally better. I haven't topped up yet since the last disaster with ace eight, so we're a bit short stacked to start this hand. I open to 15 pre flop and get not one, not two, not even three, but four callers. Lovely. The flop comes 9 4 4, rainbow. This feels like a solid board for ace high. Not a lot of 4x hands out there calling $15 pre. At these stakes, very often players are scared of paired boards as well. So I continue for $15 and get one caller from the cutoff. The turn brings the queen of spades, a card that likely doesn't connect with our opponent unless they have exactly queen 9. I only have about $70 left in my stack and I ship it in with ace high. Really just trying to get a fold here and collect the dead money that's in the middle. The cutoff, snap calls which is less than ideal. The river is the jack of hearts and we are shown six four of diamonds. Yeah, bad time to try to pull the bluff in this situation, but at least we only had a short stack to lose here. After the last hand, I've rebought and switched to the one seat. When filming, I much prefer the one, two, seven or eight seats. They definitely provide the best angles and makes it harder for our opponents to see my phone, which if you ever decide to make vlogs or record your hands at casinos, first of all, get permission. And second of all, be wary that every now and then your opponents may take a glance over and see what's on your phone. I know that this has happened to some other vloggers, uh, so just be wary of it and try to sit in the one, two, seven or eight seats if possible. Anyway, in this one, we've got queen jack off in early position. I decide to open to 15 and we see one caller from middle position. The flop comes queen, king, four, two hearts. I check. Middle position bets $15. I make the call here with a strong second pair. The turn is a beauty with the queen of clubs. I check and flow and hope to see you continue from middle position. Unfortunately, she checks back. The river isn't great. It's the eight of clubs. Middle position let out the flop though, so I don't really put her on runner runner clubs, especially since the king is a club. So I lead out for $35. She calls pretty quickly. I turn over my hand, expecting it to be good and get shown ace queen of spades. Very surprised not to get raised in this spot. To be honest, the third club likely saved us some money and we actually lost the minimum there. So a little bit of a cooler, but it could have been much, much worse. A few hands later, we look down at ace queen suited for middle position. I open 15 and we see two callers, the small blind and the big blind. The flop comes ace four six, 
two hearts. We have the whole world here. What a beautiful board for ace queen of hearts. It checks to me and I don't want to scare anyone off with too big of a sizing, but I also want to build a pot. I lead out for $20. Both players call. The turn is the jack of clubs. Checks to me again and I continue, but this time we're going to size up and I go to $75. Really trying to target a smaller ace here or maybe a smaller flush draw, but sadly they both make the fold. Either way, nice to actually win a hand for a change. In the very next hand, after the ace-queen hand, there are a few limps to me and I look down at king-queen suited on the button. Such a pretty hand, it would be a shame not to open with it. We start things off with a bet to $15. The big blind doesn't feel this is a fair price and immediately raises to 50. Well, all right then. It folds to me and taking a peek at the big blind stack, he only has about 100 behind. So what would you do in this situation? Would you fold? He's got a pair, we're at worst ace-king and we're way behind in either scenario. Call, king-queen suited plays well post-flop, plus we're in position, or jam. There's only 100 behind and he's likely gonna stick it in post-flop anyway. Please take a moment, comment down below, like and subscribe to this video if you haven't already, let me know what you would do in this spot. I enjoy these little surveys as I think it's very interesting to share my perspective on how I play my hands, but I would also like to give you guys an opportunity to let me know how you would play your hand in the same situation. I decide to go with option two and just make the call in position. We're heads up to a flop of nine, queen, three, rainbow. Our opponent does jam his remaining $100 as I figured he would, but we didn't call to fold with top pair, very good kicker and backdoor diamonds. So I make the call. The board runs out two of spades and queen of spades. Our opponent shows pocket tens and we table the winner. We get a good run out, didn't end up needing the third queen, but I will gladly take it. Kind of a scary position to be in pre-flop, but it ended up being a pure flip. Pocket tens versus two overs, and this time we came out on top. In our next exciting poker hand, we're in the big blind, and this time we have pocket tens. Let's hope this turns out better for us than our friend from the last hand. There's a raise from middle position to $12, a cutoff and small blind both call. I raise it up to 40 to go. The original raiser and the small blind call, and we're three ways to a flop. The flop comes three, six, eight, two diamonds. Checks to me, and with tens here, I feel we still have the best hand. I bet slightly over one third pot to $50. Middle position folds, and small blind shoves for around 150 or so. Uh, I kind of have a bad feeling she hit a set here. Very likely she called with threes, sixes, or eights. This isn't an over pair like jacks, queens, kings, aces. We would have seen a shove pre-flop with those hands. So what is our opponent shoving with here? A set, maybe a sneaky straight. At worst, diamonds, and we have to fade a lot of outs. But for only $100 more, with an over pair, I make the call. We see a run out of three of hearts, ace of clubs. Seeing the ace, to be honest, I assume if we're not up against a set, it could easily be ace x of diamonds, so I really don't feel good about the situation. But she says she missed. I turn over the tens, and we're surprisingly good. Whew. Very happy to avoid whatever it was we were dodging in that situation, likely diamonds, and uh, take down another solid win. For the next hand, we look down at queen nine of clubs on the button. There was a raise to 12 preflop, and I'm gonna be honest here, guys. I don't remember who it came from. Very possible it was me. I wouldn't rule it out. Either way, we are three ways to a great board of nine, six, jack, two clubs. So we have middle pair and a solid flush draw. Small blind opens to $20 and it folds to me. I, of course, make the call. The turn comes the ace of clubs. Always nice to get there right away and not have to sweat all the way to a river. The small blind puts out a bet of $20 again. And by now, you guys should know how I feel about C betting the turn with the same amount used on the flop, a sign of weakness. So I attack this weakness and put in a raise to $65. Normally, I think a larger bet would be warranted if we had a smaller flush or just an ace, but I don't want to risk getting a fold here. I really want to give my opponent a decent price to call and the small blind thinks about it for a little bit, ultimately making the call. Now the river brings in as blank a card as ever was made, the five of diamonds. Small blind checks and I have a decision. Size up big or go for a smaller sizing to ensure the call. I ultimately decide to go for about a half pot sizing and make it $100. Small blind doesn't look happy but reaches for chips and 
puts in the call. I show our hand, and we take it down. Small blind Muck's pretty disappointed, and I'm very glad to have gone with the half pot sizing here. I believe it was just the right amount to get called, and we make the maximum from likely a curious jack or a weak ace. Anything larger in the small blind probably ends up folding based on the body language when he mucked. The final interesting hand of this session is quite the roller coaster ride. We look down at pocket queens in middle position, third best hand ever made. I open to $15, and we see two callers before the cutoff raises it up to 50. Folds around to me, and with two players behind, I'll be playing this entire hand out of position. So I'm fine to either make it a big one, or just take it down now preflop. I three bet to 120. The other two players fold, and the cutoff thinks for a few moments before jamming it right in my stupid three bet face. Ugh, I have a bad feeling here. The total is $262, so it's an extra 142 more for me to make the call. Getting over two and a half to one here, is this guy ever doing this with just ace king? Jacks or worse? Ah, uh, I don't think so. Not at one three, not at these tables. Ugh, it just feels like I've run into aces here, and a fold would be a totally legit option. I'll let you guys listen into my thought process. This does not feel good. I'm sorry? 162. 162 more? Total. Or no, 262. No, I'll just say, wait a minute. 262. 262? Yeah. I call. You have aces? Really? That sucks. The flop comes 4-4 four, four, jack, and we're likely giving back a huge chunk of our profit on the day, until the turn brings a magical queen, the queen of spades, to save the day. Wow. Oh, the river is clean, and we're taking this pot of about $550 down. What a sick cooler for that guy in a huge spot. Although, had we just called the $50 raise and not made it 120, it likely would have gotten all in at some point anyway with that run out. Once again, queens come through for me when needed the most, just like at the Bellagio meetup game in the last vlog. Ugh, oh, finally, some women in my life that can actually be relied on. Shortly after this hand, I rack up and book a solid win for the day. guys that's it for this one hope you enjoyed the video uh, only one or two more to come from Vegas I had a great time out there some of the upcoming vlogs are gonna be a little bit different style I'm gonna experiment with some things I'm in New Jersey I'm outside of Atlantic City for anyone who doesn't know we are not allowed to record in Atlantic City what I've been doing is just taking pictures uh, still images of my hands, which I will then record voiceovers for and talk through the hands with you guys. I may play around with some different styles uh, going forward. Please drop a comment down below in future videos. Let me know what you like and don't like. Numbers here on the session. Uh, we were in for 600, out for a little over 1400 or so. Pretty good session overall. Started out very rough, uh, but definitely got bailed out there by queens more than once with the king queen hand and the pocket queen's hand at the end. Very, very happy to get bailed out there in some tough situations. We were behind in the king queen hand, but that's essentially a flip. The pocket queen's hand, we were crushed. So definitely got fortunate there. It goes both ways. In some upcoming vlogs, you will see that. So it does not go quite as smoothly for me every time. Thank you so much for watching. Happy holidays to everyone. Hope you all had a good Thanksgiving and uh, hope you have a good Christmas and New Year's, whatever you celebrate coming up. Good luck out there to all you guys on the felts. And until next time. What do people sell? I don't know. Can you say that? Can you say? Can you say happy holidays? Merry Christmas? Happy Hanukkah? Kwanzaa? Starbucks? Cups? I don't even know.